Welcome back to the sketchbook challenge. I'm your art teacher, Miss Compton. This week's prompt is dreams. You can interpret that to mean dreams you have when you're sleeping, daydreams, or literal dreams like dreams for your future, etc. So first off, what are dreams? Dreams are the thoughts, images, and emotions that you have when you're sleeping. Specifically during REM sleep, which is called rapid eye movement, it's the deepest stage of sleep that you have when you're sleeping. Research shows that we dream for two hours every single night, no matter if we remember them or not. And that adds up to over five or six years of our lifetime that we spend dreaming. So why do we dream? Researchers say it could be to process our memories and emotions, or express the deepest desires of our unconscious, or even practice confronting danger. What do our dreams mean? Humans have asked this question for thousands of years. Do dreams give us clues about our inner lives or unconscious? Can they express repressed emotions? Um, do they unlock some sort of clues? I encourage you to interpret your own dreams because you as the dreamer will understand the significance of symbols, of people in your dreams, of things that happened more than, let's say, the internet. However, if you're curious about what other people have said about certain symbols or maybe other people have the same or similar dream as you, definitely check that out. Look that up on the internet. Um, get curious. Okay, so if you want to remember your dreams better, you've first got to get enough sleep. Second, it's best to wake up without an alarm. I personally can't do this. I need an alarm some days, but ideal situation is to not have an alarm. Third, before you fall asleep, relax and tell yourself that you want to remember your dream. People swear that this works. All right, so when you wake up, lay in bed for a few minutes and let your mind drift and try your best to remember your dream. Grab a journal next to your bed and immediately start writing down everything that you remember. Do this before you look at your phone. That's super important, otherwise the dream will go away. This week's artist is Holly Chastain. She creates collages that are full of dreamy symbols, and I really appreciate her simple and poetic compositions, her color palettes, and also how these pieces make the viewer imagine a story that's going on. If you'd like to play with collage, start collecting found paper materials so that you have things to work with. Also, don't be afraid to layer and draw into your collage using other materials. You can interpret this prompt in a lot of different ways. I've listed some ideas out here. Whether it's a literal representation of a dream or something more abstract, you have a ton of choice within this prompt. You have the choice of creating your artwork digitally on a computer or two-dimensionally, traditionally by hand. Be sure that your collage engages the idea of dreams, includes lots of layering, has depth that uses the whole page, and lots of different textures. More information can be found on the rubric. I wanted to mix things up this week, so I created a collage based off of a dream that I had recently. I began by pulling out a box of paper scraps and magazines and started pulling things that showed the feeling of the dream. I wasn't going for an 100% accurate representation. I began cutting out shapes, playing with colors, and arranging things. You can see I changed my mind a lot, which is totally just part of the process. So in this dream, I was in a desert with these huge cliffs and I was riding a horse. I won't go into the analysis of the dream, but I'm pretty sure the landscape was inspired by this book that I was reading right before bed, and the plot was definitely about some of my anxieties from the day. Anyway... When you're making a collage, it's really helpful to lay everything out before gluing it down. Um, also at the end, I added some designs with marker for fun. I wrote out my dream, but I folded it up so the viewer has to interact with the page in order to read it. One last thing. My students told me that I'm supposed to say like and subscribe at the end of my video. So like and subscribe.